Hi guys and welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over how to convert from a schematic to a layout, which is actually something we've done many times before because that's basically what you have to do when you're going from a symbolic representation, you know, a, a resistor value of 10K and it's a little square box and you actually want to say, okay, now this is a footprint. You actually have to convert that. Uh, you have to go from this paper version of what's connected to what to actually connecting things together, which is the layout. So in the past, we've done this with, uh, well, let me show you how we've done it in the past. Uh, so this is a uh, schematic I've been showing here a couple times. What I'm going to do is actually go and uh, add a new component here. So I'm just going to put another diode in line. Uh, let's just put it over here. It's not actually realistic, but let's just do it, right? So we're going to connect from here to here and from here to here. We're not going to talk about the fact that you shouldn't have connected those things. Uh, <laughs> but we put a diode in line. Uh, and so the first thing you have to do is you have to annotate, right? So this is when you, if you see right now, you know, I added a new component, but you see that this, while this is D1, this is D question mark. And so annotating should basically give that a number. Okay, we've done that. Now we're going to go and save the netlist, generate a netlist here. We've got our netlist. Now we can go over to our layout and read the netlist. And hopefully this works. So we have a couple options. We're going to keep everything default, read the netlist, and do that. It's going through a bunch of the footprint checking right now. And <laughs> I do have a lot of components on this design. So, and now we have this new component here. I have to hit close. And now we can see if there was more than one component, you'd see it would be we could be able to drag it around. But in this case, we just have the one new component. I can drop it wherever. I can go put it into my design. And you see, that wasn't too many steps, but that was, uh, you know, uh, a couple steps there. And so today, what I want to show you is a, a new button or a new way to quickly update things uh, without doing that. So instead, let's go back to the schematic. We'll add another diode. Again, ter terrible idea. You would never do this. But we're just going to add this here. Now I'm going to hit Save. That's the library error I'm cleaning up right now. Don't worry about that. Uh, and I'm just going to actually hit F8. Now, what you can also do, I think it's in, uh, I don't ever do this. Just update, yeah, here it is, tools. Update PCB from schematic. If we do that, hit the F8 key, it's basically showing the same annotate thing. You need to, you know, it wants to ask you whether or not you want to annotate so that you can choose. We're going to say yes, annotate. And then from here, it's going to say, okay, well, now we're over in the uh, update box, the update dialog. It's actually pre-showing you some of the errors that are going to happen here, right? So some of the uh, the footprints, whatever happened here. So there were a couple of small errors, uh, but uh, if we hit update PCB, same thing's going to happen. We now have that component there. So this is a effectively a one-click way to go and update, uh, to go and push a new component from your schematic into your layout, which is actually really really convenient. Now one thing that I should mention here is that this did actually wipe out some of my uh, my graphics. And that is something that I did, do not like about this feature and something you should be careful about. So the main thing to know here is that the, <laughs> there's the CE form going off. Uh, it, the main thing to know here is that the, uh, your footprints need to be locked down, right? So some of mine were locked down. You can see that this, this is a, uh, a mounting hole here, and I've, if I mouse into it, I'm guessing that it actually is locked down. And you see, yes, this one was locked. Now, there were other things on here that were not locked down. So I had some graphics that basically did not make it. So that's the main thing to know is if you're, and, and it's really a good practice anyways, if you're going to put something in your layout that does not exist in your schematic, either graphics or mounting holes or anything by adding adding via the, the footprint button here, you need to make sure you lock that thing down. So I'm actually not going to save this, but uh, once you do have everything locked down, and uh, you will actually see, you, you will be able to update everything uh, with F8 without issue. So maybe not the uh, safest thing if you're, uh, you know, if you're adding a lot of graphics and stuff like that. Like I said, best practice is always to hit lock on those graphics, but uh, definitely a faster way to go from schematic to layout, and that's something I do a lot. You know, especially if you're adding new components to a layout, uh, you're, you know, in your, in the middle of design, you're not sure what you actually want to have in there. You're adding new resistors, capacitors, whatever you need to do. Uh, that's actually just a really great way to quickly go from one to the other and just translate. So if you have any other questions, you can go over to the CE forum, the, sorry, the KaiKed forum. Uh, that's forum.kaiked.info. There is also a CE forum, that's Contextual Electronics Forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. Contextual Electronics, if you don't know, is a program where we teach you how to design things like the board that you saw there uh, and other 
more practical things. That was actually an art project I was working on and have shown in the past. Uh, so, uh, hoping to see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.